Hello everyone and welcome to the third part of this tutorial series and in this one I'll be showing you how to complete this search screen so we'll be adding this um, number of results and would we'll also be correcting the problem with the deserialization of the bedroom number and the bedroom number and finally we we'll would also add um, an infinite um, scroll to the uh, UI so whenever you scroll to the end of this list it should load more so the first thing we're going to be doing would be to first of all add kind of like a status test because you can see whenever we load the application just like this it shows us a, a blank screen so I would head over and do that um, in our search screen dot that so we have this condition whereby if the model it is if the model is loading it should show a circular progress indicator so else it should so show the sliver list so in this section i'll just add one more condition and i would create or let me add the condition first of all so the condition is going to go like this so if the model dot properties dot length is less than one that means if it is empty it should show let me just copy this so if the model if the property list is empty it should show something else then else it can show you the sliver list so let me format this and hope this will make sense here yeah. so if the model is loading it should show a circular progress indicator if it is not loading and the length is less than one it should show a text um, start search cool then if the length of the properties that means if you have a list of properties then it should show the sliver list so this is just a um, bunch of ternary statements to inform the user yeah cool so you can see the start search over here and we would add some styling to this um, headline I think headline should do okay cool so that is that and there's something I noticed here we have this model dot properties dot length over here and we also have the model dot properties dot length and this stuff just checks the length of the properties list so instead of repeating ourselves like this we could just create a simple function over here in our um, scoped model class so first of all let me just rearrange this i want the private instances to be on one line then i'll move this to the top so cool so i'll just create a simple um, function that returns the um, list of property so i'll name it gets property counts so this is just going to return properties properties dot length cool so this get property count function is just going to return the length of the properties so instead of repeating ourselves over with this logic we could just come over here and replace it so i'll just do model dot get property counts over there and for the child count i'll just do paste it so cool so model dot get property counts we can add that if we want to Okay, okay. Oh, 
Okay, cool. Well, since it's a function, I don't have to do that. I that's very silly of me. So cool. So it's a function now. It's not just a variable, a getter variable. So I could come over here and put this. So it's just a function that returns the number of properties in our list. So cool. So this is working right now. And one more thing to do would be to make this text over here dynamic. I don't want it to be um, this because this text field is also going to show whenever we do a search of a place that doesn't exist and it returns an empty list. So I could just come over here and create one more um, field. So I'll name this status text and it's going to be by default that's start search. Okay, then I'll create its getter. Make this private. So by default, it's going to be start search. Then I could use it in our. I could use it over here. Model dot status text. If I save, you can see it still shows us this. Then one more thing I want to do would be to head over here and. Um, If Nestoria dot response dot listings dot lens there should be an is empty. Okay, cool. If it is empty, then I want my status te status text to be nothing found. Cool. And I'll show you later on why I'm doing it this way instead of using properties dot length. The reason I'm, why I'm doing this is as we go ahead to build the infinite scrolling list, the length of this property would continue to be increasing. So it will be, it will be really empty. So let's see if this stuff works. So I'll head over here and do a search of a location that doesn't exist. Let me just do. Um, J O see so it works nothing found because of this um, place doesn't exist so that is working so I'll do my search correct search and everything should be working fine cool cool so um, the next thing I want to do right now would be to add this results text over here. So first things first, we're going to go get that from our model. So I would do, um, I'll first create the variable. So let's check what that is over here. So back in our um, build value class, we have listings and we also have total results. So it's going to be total results. So I'll head back and it's, it's an int, it's an integer value. So total results. And I'll head down here and create the getter. Cool. So, oops, we 
results. Uh, I could then come over here and um, do total results equals to Nestoria dot response dot total results then I put this so we have the total results over here so we we'll save this and we we'll head back to our search screen to create the UI so in our sliver list by default it returns a column which is a column that has yeah a column that has this property item and also this divider underneath it so we're just going to add some bas basic um, bunch of if else statements so if the index is equals to zero that means if it is the first item over here i want to replace it with my own personal content so if index is equals to zero i want to do something here then else why is my system slow else i want to return this column so cool so if the index is equals to zero return something else so what do i want to return let's have a look at this so i want to return a container so i'll return a container because remember this whole stuff is in a sliver list so i'm using a builder to build the list so i'll return a container i put my semicolon then the child would be a text field and it is its value is going to be since it's an integer i'll use string interpolation to insert the integer value inside the text field so i'll use model the total results then <coughs> i'll add the styling of body two so I should just declare this stuff once and for all. I don't know why I keep okay theme that off the text theme the body to the copy width. Um, I want the color to be colors dot gray. Where are you? Okay, cool. So if the index is equals to zero, I want to add this stuff over here. So I'll hit refresh and see how that looks. Oops, it's null. Okay, let's do the request one more time and see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So we're hitting the API once more. So you can see it's currently it's currently working. So we have one, two, two, nine. Yeah. So the next thing to do would be to go give it a bottom border and add some little styling. So we'll do that right now. So we'll use a decoration or first of all, let's give it a padding. of 16 cool then we'll give it a decoration um, border bottom border side Okay, let me give you the color. Um, grade 300. And I think I'll make this grade 600. Let's see how that looks. Cool. So, we'll add just this text to 
<coughs> make it look better so this is currently working but there's just one something we need to add let me see if it will give us any okay so there's something we're going to add so right now in our sliver list we told it that the child count should be the um, total number of properties but also we now added something here we added the container to the li um, sliver list so this container we added here is going to increase is going to remove one of the property item so if you add something like this the next thing to do would be to just add plus one over here to the property count so to the child count i mean so what this So okay, if I redo the search, you can see over here the search is the first item is Kinross. Let me just do the search and see. So what that simply does is it's is gonna so if the total properties is at 20 items so it's going to be 20 items plus one so the extra one is this container widget so that is just what i just did over there so why is this stuff taking time to load uh, okay i don't know why it was taking time to load Okay, I think it's the internet. So, yeah, so we're done with that right now. So, I think we should proceed. And there's something we also have to do right now. Let me check. Model.property.index. Okay, so since the first item of this index is going to be this container, it means that this property item is currently returning the second item, which is the first index. Because since we've said the first index, which is zero, should return the container, the loop is going to go to the next index, which is one. So this model.properties.index, this property item we've seen over here is the second item of the property um, list. So to do that, to correct that, we'll just simply come here and minus one. So index minus one gives us zero. So that means the first item would now, the list of items, properties will now start from zero. So let's save that. And you should see this Kinross should come to the second one. Let's save that and do a new search. Okay, there was no need for the search. You can see what I just explained. Kinross now, <coughs> Kinross now becomes the second item. So I hope my explanation was clear. The index, if the index is zero, return this container. So after that, it goes to one. So Kinross was currently one. So we just did index minus one to give us this Cecil Avenue. So let's ride on. Mm, the next thing we're gonna be doing would be to replace this dummy content in this bedroom and bedroom. So I think, where did we do that? <coughs> Property item widget. So by default, we just passed in two and one. And I told you guys the reason was because of um, the API over here. Where are you? Okay, this is it. The API over here, um, sometimes it returns um, this um, double quotes instead of returning no. Because by default, when you don't have a bedroom number, because this is an integer value, bedroom number and bedroom number are inter integer values. But whenever the item is not here, it's supposed to return no, but currently it's returning a string. And um, built value serialization plugin um, could not um, serialize this because it could not just cast it from string to integer. So I would show you the error first of all, then we'll correct it so you'll see what I actually mean. So I'll head back to this um, uh, value type classes. 
and I'll uncomment this stuff over here. So bedroom number and bedroom number are correct, they can be nullable, which means that they can their values can be empty. So if I save this, there should be an error during serialize serialization. Okay, I need to run um, this stuff. Remember, we need to run this stuff, Flutter packages for our build runner because we just created two new build values. So we'll do Flutter packages pub. Pub run build runner watch yeah flutter packages pub run build runner watch so let's generate a new file generating wow okay so Okay, so it's done, and we will head on. So the next thing to do, why is this stuff giving me, okay, no errors. So while we've generated that, the next thing to do would be to go get another request. So I would search for some other place and we would see the error. <coughs> Okay, no error for this. And that's simple because we've not used them in our view. So in property item, let's, let me be sure. It's supposed to give me, Okay, so let's go use them over here. So I'll just, um, the text should be property dots, what's the stuff? Okay, bedroom number, bedroom number. So I'll use string. What am I doing? Okay. Okay. So we'll save this. So if it is null, you can see currently they are all null. So if it is null, then you just print out a hash sign. Just to show the NC. Okay, they should be null because Oops, what am I doing? Okay, so you just do this. You put this stuff inside your string interpolation. You put this 
double question mark. So if this stuff is null, it should print out hash. So let's go do a new search. And we should get our error, hopefully. Okay, cool. So you can see over here, this deserializing stuff here. So the problem is simple. Failed to deserialize bedroom number, bedroom number, blah, blah, blah. And the reason is because it was trying to deserialize this double quotation mark into an integer. And it failed because type string is not subtype of type integer. So what the um, build value deserialization was trying to do, it was trying to deserialize this string into an integer because in our value type class here, we declared bedroom number and bedroom number to be an integer. So to solve this is quite simple, although it took me two days to figure it out. But to do that, we'll head over to our scope model. And in our JSON dot decode. The JSON dot decode has a second it has a second um parameter. Let's go there. So you 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 it accepts two parameters. First it accepts the source and also the reviver. But this reviver is an um optional named parameter. And what this revi reviver does is that it takes in the um decoded objects and um, gives you the key and the value. So I'll show you how that works. So what we just want to do is we want to get into um, the um, JSON object while it's decoding and change the value of the um, of one of the key, which is bedroom number and also bedroom number. So I think if I show you how it works, you'd get a hang of what I mean. So we'll pass the reviver over here and the reviver has the key and the value. So we could just do a simple print statement to print the key. Let's just print the key. Let's just print the key. So whenever I'm doing a search, So let me just do search. So we can see over here, it still gives us that serialization error. But now we can see we have, an, we have um, access to the keys it provides. So you can see we have bedroom number and bedroom number. So what I want to do right now is to do some if statements because let me see okay yeah so what i'm going to do would be if the key is equals to can i copy it over here yeah if the key is equals to between number If the key is equal to be true number, and if the value is equal to this return null, else or else just return the value. So this value could be two, five. So what this does is if the value is equal to this return null, which is valid, then because we made the um, value type nullable, then if it is something like three or something like that, return that correct value. So we'll do the same thing for bedroom number.
so this goes okay if it is this return else else return v cool so when we're done with this we should return other values so these other values would be stops for like car spaces commissions and so on and so forth so this reviver function just object function just helps us get into the um, contents we are decoding and actually change stops so we could also add um, do some manipulations or add some text to this or whatever you want to do you could also do some typecasting here if you want to so this is how you get into this JSON while it's decoding and change its values so we are done with this but to make this look more sexy I would just put it into a variable decode dead json and return decoded json cool so we'll do a hot restart and let's see let's do a search So you can see no more errors so that is how to get this fixed cool so let's write on the next thing i want to do on this page would be um infinite not really infinite but kind of like a pagination so whenever i reach the end of this list i would show a spin alva here then it would load more content so to achieve that we would head back to would head back to our API and let's see what this stuff gives us there are some options here so by default the number of results is equals to 20 but I would make that lesser so before we do that there's something i want to show you guys this uh, string currently is looking really messy and ugly you can see how long it is so there's a handy um function in that that helps us do um kind of like build uris so i'll show you how that is so it's uri dot https they are both the same thing but https is for secured servers then the authority is going to be this i put that in a string let me put this stuff so The next stuff is going to be this part. But let me show. You, let me look at an example instead of banging our heads over here. So this is an example. Cool. So I'll just copy this and do this. So this stuff. This function helps us build URIs. So the next one is the path, which is going to be slash API. So I'll just do slash API. Then the next one is going to be the authority on encoded paths, then the query par parameters, which is going to be a map of strings. So this is the authority. This is the unencoded path then that is this stuff then the optional the optional query param so this stuff here this square bracket although it's a that stuff but this square bracket means an optional um, function parameter but if you have the call libraries it's just a named optional parameter that is a difference so this next stuff we want to pass is optional so would pass in let me just build this stuff and instead of wasting time doing it one by one I'll build it and I'll show you 
yeah so this is how it looks so you have the authority which is the biz uri then the unencoded part then you now have the list of query parameters which is in a map so i changed i added a new property called number of results and i gave it to 10. so instead of it returning 20 by default it's going to be returning 10 results so i also did a simple statement here so if you don't pass in a place by default so if i just do a search without passing in a place here it should return brighton so you should search for brighton you can do that if you want to do or you could leave it so uh this uh scroll uh this stuff doesn't come back up so in our search can let me just add quickly add two properties to our sliver app bar i would add the um Pinned and snap, I think. Pinned equals to true. And snap equals to true. Okay. Not pinned, floats. Floating equals to true. And I think I might need to do it. Okay, cool. So if I come back and I just scroll up, it comes down. So I don't have to scroll to the top to bring it down. So now we want to do infinite scrolling list. And to do that, the first thing I want to do would be head over to the, to head over to the API to see uh, an example result. So in the example results, in our response, I think, in our response, let me check. total results okay yeah so in our response we have um, more fields total results and total pages so how the pagination is going to work is as we scroll by default it returns page one if you can check the api over here page defaults to one so if we set it to page two it's going to return the next result which is from 21 to 40 so from our API, we're going to need something. We're going to need one of this stuff. And the stuff we're going to need is going to be total pages. So the idea of what I want to achieve is whenever I scroll to the end, it should increment from page one to page two. When I scroll again to the next 10 items, page three, and so on and so forth. So I need these total pages to just simply do an if else statement. So if the current page is equal to the total page, it means that we have reached the end. So don't load more. So I'll add this total pages um, to our um, value type over here. So I'll just do this total pages pages and I'll save. So it should load um, because we've used the watch action so we would head back to our scope model everything loaded fine cool so we'll just create a new field here which is going to be total pages and over here oops add total pages so cool so while we're also setting the properties we also want to set um total pages total pages So now we have total pages. Then we'll do a hot restart so I could get. So the next thing to do would be head to, to head over to our search screen and we'll do 
an if else statement inside here inside the sliver list so what i want to achieve is if i get to the end of the page i want to show a circular progress indicator and also if the current page is less than the total page you would show the circular project um, progress indicator so the first thing to do would be to add an if statement over here but but before that we would need to do something let me see the logic so the first thing to do would be if the index is equals to model dot get properties counts that is the first step then let's add this else if so if the index is equals to model dot property dot count that means because whenever you're using a sliver list or anything that has an index that is built from an index um, widget builder while you scroll remember your list builds while you scroll so your first index is zero up to like probably six then as you scroll the index keeps incrementing seven eight nine ten so if the index is equals to the last value of the your properties you should show the circular progress indicator and not just that you should also check if um your properties has more lists to be displayed so i think we'll add a new um value here which is has more has more products which is going to be a boolean uh has more properties let's just put it has more it's as simple as that so by default it will be true mm, yeah bull has more has more pages Oh, so has more pages what okay so what I want to do here is if Nestoria dot all this code can also be you can also um, um, what is the word again? I've forgotten the word. So you can always make your code better, but let's just, we can always refactor our code later on, but let's just make progress. So nextoria.response. Dot dot, um, I think I need to add page too. I need to add page property. So we'll head back here and we'll add page yeah we need to add it not i think so so int gets page let me confirm that so page yeah correct so int get page is there another thing so cool then we head back here so if nestoria.response.page so that's the beauty of using build value you can just do everything on the go so if nestoria.response.page equals to total pages then we'll set has more pages equals to false you see the logic yeah has more pages equals to false so let's head back to our search screen so if the index is currently the last item in our property list and if um, has more pa model that has that has more pages then 
return um, we're going to return a circular progress indicator but we'll put it in a padding let me just do circular progress indicator then we'll wrap it in a padding so the pattern is just going to be at the top and at the bottom so yeah so if let's let's save and we'll do a search and see if our logic is actually working so let me just do this okay and also one thing i want to do is i want to print out the index so you see how what i just explained so i'll print out the index here so So you can see, remember the sliver list, just like your list builder builds the items of your list as you scroll, as they scroll into the screen. So by default, it builds seven. So let's keep scrolling, eight, and so on. Okay, so you can see our loader is showing. So we just have to put this whole stuff in a center we'll just center the widget should we center the padding or the circular progress but let's center this okay cool so you can see everything is working right now so when we get to the end if the index is equals to model dot get property count that means you can see if the in let me just okay okay it's straightforward so if the index is this last item so the index here is going to be 19 which is this last item then you should show this circular progress indica indicator so now we are done with that the next thing to do would be to also use the same logic to load more content so um we are going to be doing something yeah let me see okay so I, when I was trying to do this, I tried to just use if the index is equals to the last item and it has more pages, then over here I would just call our get properties function. But it was not, it was actually getting the results, but whenever we get to the last index and we keep scrolling, even before the other items load, it just keeps loading, 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 on and on and on. So the solution I did was to use a scroll controller so you can see over here a scroll controller um it's stored as a member variable in a state object so the first thing to know is that we can use this in a stateful widget and not a stateless widget so it just gets you gives you um information about the scroll of your viewport so they can get the scroll position you can offset your scroll maybe like when you open a new page it should scroll maybe to the um to the end of the page or something like that so with scroll controller it just controls a scrollable widget and the scrollable widget we're using over here is a um we're going to use it on a custom scroll view you can see from here it works with list view grid view custom scroll view so what i want to do now is that whenever we scroll to the end of our viewports we're going to get that dynamically whenever we scroll to the end of our viewport it should automatically get new items and append it to our property list so first things first we're going to convert this search screen into a stateful widget so i hit alt enter convert it to a stateful widget then the next thing is to create a scroll controller And I'll name it controller. Then, whenever we initialize our states, whenever this class loads, that means we're going to override the 
override uh, init states <laughs> silly me so whenever this state is loaded what should happen um, we should create a new controller so it's going to track our scroll position so we'll do that by doing new scroll controller dot add listener and the listener is going to be listener is just going to be a callback which is going to be a function scro scroll listener and I would create the scroll listener over here Cool. So um, there's something you can see over here. Oops, what am I doing? Void add listener, void callback. Okay, returns nothing. Okay, so there's something I did here. I used this double dot. So what this, it's just a cascade notation. It's a that language feature. So instead of me coming over here to um, do something like controller, dots add listener you can see instead of me doing that i just add it automatically from the constructor section here so this is a cascade notation so double dots so i'm calling the add listener or i'm hooking it up to the school controller we just created so yeah the next thing we're going to do is a simple if else statement so if controller dot position dot um, pixels yeah is equals to controller how many minutes this video 50 minutes okay controller dot position dot um, max scroll extent okay so what this is if the controller if the position of your scroll view wait yeah if the position of your scroll view is equals to the maximum extent of your viewports you should do something so now if i'm at the top now my pixel is currently at zero then if i keep going 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 up to the maximum extent which means the end of the list or the end of the scrollable container which is a um, custom sc scroll view here so what this means is whenever I get to the end of our whenever I scroll up to the end of my custom scroll view do something so what do I want to do mm, I want to increment the page so from our response here by default the page is one so when I get to the end of the page I want the page to be incremented to two and I get a request and make a new request and append it to the properties list so I'll create a class member here to again and name it in page equals to one so by default it is one then um, okay So the next thing to do would be to check if it has more pages. So, whoa, problem. So now this is a problem. I want to make use of this um, has more pages field from our model. But remember I told you to use scoped model. There are three steps. You first create the model. Then the next thing is to create the scope model, which is the entry point, the scope model widget which is the entry point of the model to your application. Then the third stuff was to implement this scoped to wrap the container into, to wrap your widget in a scoped model descendant. But now I want to get this value from outside the scoped model descendant and there's no way to currently do it. So the guys that created um, the scope model plugin actually gave us 
a way to actually achieve that. And it's going to be using through this. So you can see here, you can either get the values of the model from the scope model dis descendant or the scope model dot off static method. So I'll be using this to actually get it outside our descendant. So this is the same principle with like um, inherited widgets whereby you can get um, information outside down the um, widget tree. So I'll replace this with property script model. So it's a static member, so we can easily assess it. The name of the function is this off over here. So cool. Then for the build context, uh, yeah. So with this, we can now have access to those model members. But since I'll be using it, I'll just do something here. Equals to property scoped model dot off code. Yeah. So now I'll now do if props dot has more pages. Pages page plus plus and also um, props dot get properties. Okay, so now we need to pass it the place and also a page. So to do that, we would first, hmm, okay, prop.get properties. We need to pass it the place and also the page. So the first thing I'll do would be to head over to our get properties method and I don't want to set is loading equals to true because if we are getting if scratch can okay okay yeah just hot restart let me um what am I doing okay Okay, so first of all, let's see if this stuff actually works. Let's print, let's see if our scope controller works. So print um, reached end. Uh, and one more thing we also have to do in our, we also have to override the dispose function of a stateful widget. So whenever we are destroying this function, we also want to um, destroy this scroll controller to save resources. So I'll do controller dots. Mm, what's the function? Controller dot dispose. Yeah. So let's see if this stuff works. Let me just do a basic search. Oops, okay. I have to hook up this controller to our custom scroll view. So that is what I'm going to do here. So in our custom scroll view, I'll pass the controller we just created. So it is now attached to this. So the events can now work. So I keep scrolling. You can see reached end. So you can see it is currently working. Okay. So cool. So the next thing to do would be to construct our get properties function in such a way that it accepts the place and also the page. So I'll head back here and say and do a simple if statement. So if, first of all, I'll make an optional parameter here, int page 
by default it should be one so if page is equals to one then its loading should be true and I'll copy the same thing here so the stuff I'm just trying to achieve here is that so if I'm just loading the first page if I'm doing the first search I could have the circular progress indicator but if I'm doing other searches I would not want to be have that circular progress indicator at the center here so I'll do that and change it to false the next thing to do would be to get our value of our search value so whenever I'll do a search here I want to get this value over here and store it in our model so I'll create one more field called place name So whenever I do a search, I want this um, place name. Place name should be equals to the place we search. So cool. So now I could head over here and do this um, props dot place name. Cool. So it gets, so whenever I want to load more, it just looks up at the value of this play mod and makes a request to the API to the same place. So that is that for that. So the next thing I want to do would be to also pass in this page. So I'll pass in this variable equals to, yeah. So when I get to the end of the screen, Okay, I'm coming. This if statement, this print is supposed to be here. So now that we've done that, we also have to let our API know that we are passing the page right now. So we'll head back to this, to the model and pass in um the page key and also do this by default one so since this https uh, query params require a string we we'll just do page dot to string and we'll put our comma so now, by default, it's going to be page one, its request. Then whenever I increment it from the scroll listener here, it will be page two, page three, page four, and so on and so forth. So now we've passed it to our API. Let's see, is there, okay. Now we've passed it to our API. Then the next thing to do would be to, um, not just because initially how we've been doing getting our properties how we've been filling up our properties list is whenever we make a search if it returns 20 results we should assign the whole 20 results to the properties um list here but we wouldn't be doing it that way would be adding them as they come so if it's um returns 10 items and you make another request it should append it to the list so it should append 10 if you make another one 20 30 and so on and so forth so you shouldn't just replace the list so we would be using the map function we'll be using the for each function and for each item we'll remove this to list okay let me just do it so you would understand it so 
for each property I want to do something which is going to be inside the function so for each property I want my property list I want to add them to my property list so I'll do add that property cool so whenever I make a request it should just add it to the list so if I load the first page second page you should just keep adding them so that gives us the um, effect of an infinite scrolling list so properties dot add yeah cool is there another thing I'm missing okay we'd also pass in page here to the get data function which is what we declared over here so I'll do a hot restart and see if this works I'll also print this page from the UI so I'll see if it's in sync with the one we're getting from our database so I'll also print this this video is quite long I know uh, can I? ok so let's see if our whole logic is working So let's scroll to the end and see. So you can be watching this side, this section to see if everything is falling in sync. So I get to the tenth item. You can see a circular progress indicator. Cool, everything is working. So I keep scrolling to the next 10 items. You can see it's showing me. So it keeps loading and keeps loading and keeps loading. So you can see three what is three? Okay, yeah. This three is from the API. Our UI page is currently three, and it makes a request to the API, which is also three here. So you can see everything is working. I keep scrolling to the end, and you can see a circular progress indicator. So that is how to make an infinite scrolling list, not an infinite scrolling list. It's not going to load when we reach the end of the um, pages. When we reach, when this um, has more pages, is equals to false. You could set your own condition to see if we are actually correct, but I'll leave that up to you. So, one more thing I want to do is um, one quick one. So, um, so one thing I want to do is if we get to the end and it's loading and we keep making requests I want whenever it is loading from the back end mm, yes whenever it's loading more I should not trigger another load so when I'm doing this thing I shouldn't trigger another load so I want to just create a simple boolean to prevent multiple loading while we are still at the end of the page so I'm just going to quickly create that in our model I'm going to create a boolean name it is loading more and it should be should it be is loading more should be false by default it should be false then I'd also create so this is just to prevent multiple loads while we are still at the end of the page. So it's loading more should return is loading more. So if I'm not loading the first page, it means I'm loading more. So I'll just put a simple S statement here. So if it's not the first page, then is loading more 
equals to true the same idea for this you can put that in an else if but still the same idea is loading more equals to false so that's going to prevent multiple triggers so I'll save that and let me show you something now so this is currently for Plymouth so if I do a search for Sussex so I click on this You can see it's still showing me Plymouth, and the re it's still showing me Plymouth because my logic here states that I should just keep adding the properties of any new listings we find. So success is going to be at the bottom of the page. So if we keep going, we're going to get to a point where we'll see success. We've loaded so many lists. We've loaded so many, but we we'll keep going till we see can you see so you can see success over here so what I want to do is just to put a simple logic here so if I'm loading a first page because whenever you do a search from here it's going to lo load page one so if I'm loading the first page I would do properties.clear so I'm going to clear the list so properties.clear and we'll do a hot restart and you would see whenever we do a new search it would replace the list Cool. So I'll do play months. So our logic is still working. We have our circular progress indicator. Then I'll go back up and do Sussex. I'll do a search and it will automatically clear the list, then load the new data for success. So it's working and this was a really, really long tutorial. Cool. So thank you guys for watching and in the next video, I think we'll be creating the detail page. So I'll see you in the next one.